welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. Okay, so now uh, kind of moving on to a, a broader topic, which is um, Google's directive or advice to SEOs that they not pay attention to ranking signals. For some time, Google has been uh, arguing that we should create content for people, hence the helpful content update, and not for search engines. And that this sort of focus, all this tactical focus on particular ranking signals and tactics that we're talking about right now is really not as important as a kind of holistic approach where you're building good content, quality content for the user. And, um, you know, the, the world is a place where peace and love prevail. Um, it just, it's, 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 it's the right advice in, in, in at the highest level, create quality content for people, solve real problems, deliver good information. But it's, it strikes me as incredibly naive um, from a sort of a industry standpoint that Google has created lots of incentives, both consciously and kind of unwittingly, and it has created this world that it is now decrying. And people are compelled to do these things in order to rank, which is critical to business success. So there's this kind of strange um, I don't, I, I, it's not exactly a paradox. I mean, Google has created the situation that it now is kind of uh, critical of. And there's the contradictions yeah. of a dialectical relationship. Yes. By Mike Blumenthal available. They don't call him professor maps for nothing. <laughs> yeah. And the exact same thing happens with, re happened with reviews. They create a marketplace, the importance of them, they accentuate them. They make them a ranking factor. And then all of these markets, Illicit and otherwise. And they wonder why up. there's why, wonder why there's fraud. And then they don't do anything about it, right? They take years and years and years for them to even come up with an algorithm that can filter some of the stuff, and then it filters the wrong stuff. So it's like, you know, it it is very very weird that they create these marketplaces, illicit marketplaces or marketplaces that focus on the wrong thing, and then s turn around and say, "Be a good person." This is, yeah, I mean, I think to some extent Google's hands are tied, right? Because they can't reveal too much, and I'm not defending it in any stretch, but uh, they can't reveal <laughs> too much of the algorithm or else spammers will sort of take advantage of it um, to the detriment of all users. Um, and at the same time, there's only so many signals that their algorithm can look at. And so, um, you know, they're, they're, they don't have, it's not like they have that many options to like assess content quality aside from signals like links and click through rates and those kinds of things. Like it's a pretty known set of factors at this point. So, um, I just think it's, yeah, I mean, disingenuous isn't a strong enough word, but, um, you know, this sort of, Hi uh, hypocrisy sort of, is a word you could hypocrisy, use. Hypocrisy. Yeah, maybe. Um, but this, this kind of tone and, and, um, these kinds of, of instructions has been around again for as long as that space. Um, you know, all of the sort of contentious link building panels with Matt Cutts back in the day. I mean, this was the same same general stance that that he took and has kind of been the, the party line from Google for a long time. So um, I just think, you know, and the, the problem is that, you know, if you're not, if you haven't been an SEO a long time, you're sort of taking everything Google says as gospel. If you're an executive who doesn't understand SEO, you're probably taking everything Google says as gospel. Um, and that's, you know, that's not great for the industry and it's, it's not great ultimately for the performance of your website. So. Well, so, so one question, rather than just sort of continue to complain, which we could do at length, one question is, as how does Google, Google actually solve this problem? How does Google actually get uh, people to create high quality content for humans and not for search engines? What, what would you, if, they, if you were, they you know, find Google's a way hired to reward you it. as a consultant, but, but yeah, they find a way to reward that, right, algorithmically. But the reality is, like, even if a, you know, a solo doctor writes this amazing guide on plantar fasciitis, it's, it's never going to outrank up. a Mayo Clinic. So, like, that's just that advice is right. just not true. 
Well, I mean, is this just a sort of an unsolvable problem then? I, I mean, I think it's at least, at least in the current search paradigm, it feels pretty unsolvable. Um, I think that there's who, who knows exactly what's coming out with, you know, SGE and all this stuff. Um, I think some of the EEAT user, uh, you know, user rater, uh, quality guidelines are, they, I think are intended to go in this direction where, you know, they're looking at this in highly critical, you know, your money or your life categories and, and real people are making the evaluation of like, is this a good piece of content or not? And if it's a bad piece of content, it drops and other pieces of content have a chance to compete, but the internet is such a huge place. And again, there's only so many signals algorithmically that Google can use to determine credibility just to be in that game of like potential results. So I don't know that it's necessarily solvable, but I do think what is solvable is for Google to be more honest with webmasters and marketers uh, with some of these kind of comments. Do you think more transparency? I mean, David, you said that <clears throat> more, um, you know, kind of openness about the algorithm would be problematic for reasons yeah, that Google has that's, long stated. That's fine. And like know? I said, yeah. And I know I'm not, I'm not encouraging Google to like open up its algorithm and, you know, maybe regulators will at some point require that, but um, I don't. Well, in I'm Europe, it's starting Google. to happen. Yeah. I'm not encouraging Google to do that at all. What I am saying is like, come out and say like, Hey, we try to reward high quality content, but just because you create a piece of content for users does not mean it's going to rank. And you really do need to look at things like search volume and the uh, number of backlinks you have on the quality of those backlinks to assess whether you should be creating content in this category at all and how you should be structuring that content. Like that's a much more transparent and uh, helpful piece of advice rather than, uh, you know, the rain. But it goes in the opposite that... direction. It... Right. But it goes in the opposite direction that they're going in. I mean, they, that would be sort of back toward the signals and back toward the ranking factors. And that what they're trying to do is get entirely away from that and say, oh, these ranking signals don't really matter. It's really all just about your holistic approach to content. Yet that's just transparently not true. Yeah. And to great, move you know, back amazing the, that that's the rant. goal, right? If, if that's the company goal internally is to like move the algorithm in that direction, you know, again, that's another way they could frame this, but to like completely um, beggar the reality of the current situation with these comments. And it's just, it's, it lacks credibility. And it's, uh, as you said, you know, potentially even hypocrite. Yes. So we have to say something positive before we end today, because that's a, that's a downer. That's a bummer, man. I guess um, I don't see it as a bummer because, so I think, like, like I said, it's been Google's track record for for as long as I've been an SEO. So it's not necessarily a downer; it's just reality. Yeah, you're I'm a like, realist. Yeah, I'm a realist. You're a realist. Right. Well, I so I so I would say I would say that um, the research that we've been doing is really interesting and exciting, and we'll be presenting it <laughs> at local <laughs> SEO for good today. And um, there's a lot of nuanced things, as we talked about in the in the in the beginning with Mike's discussion that we're learning about user behavior that, you know, are not generally part of the conversation, which operates on a higher level. And so I think that that's something that I'm very encouraged by and interested in. And, um, you know, we're learning things that we didn't know from this sort of general local, local SEO discussion. So that's a semi-positive thing. That was my attempt. Good work. At the See, the weather is getting better in the San Francisco Bay area. Yeah. And for, for everybody um, who's listening to this ahead of the American Labor Day holiday, have a great weekend. If you're elsewhere in the world, you too. Uh, we will not publish on Monday in observance of Labor Day, but we will be back next week with more insights and um, occasionally humorous takes on local search issues. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.